Hey, hey everybody, so this is my official 200k subs video. I thought that I would talk about my experience building up my YouTube channel without any original intention of building a YouTube channel as a good lesson for anybody who wants to get into coding, wants to start a business, wants to get a coding job, or if you want to start a YouTube channel. So you're probably asking, how does starting a YouTube channel and building up a channel have anything to do with coding or business? Has everything to do with it because the principles and the methodology I use to build this YouTube channel is the same that I use to build my first business, to learn how to code, to build my first software. They're universal principles and they are 100% applicable. So. Don't get me wrong, I'm not claiming to be the biggest YouTuber, I'm not even close. But for a tech YouTuber, 200,000 subs isn't bad, especially given that I'm 169 years old. Now, typically, if you're getting into YouTube, this is a young person's game, right? The big YouTubers are all people in their 20s, maybe early 30s, not 169. So how does a 169-year-old developer from the 90s develop this following uh, without really trying to. So I think the first lesson when you jump into anything is that it's something you should enjoy. You should try to find something you should enjoy. Since I was a little kid, I kind of realized that. I said to myself, I saw all these people I knew, older people, who were all working at jobs they weren't too happy about, at least the most of them. So that eventually, when they hit 65, they could retire and, and finally do something they wanted to do. Now the cliche is, once they get to that age, if they made it to that age, then they are, they're old and they're in bad shape and then they die in a few years, so it's not cool. So first rule is do something that you enjoy because then what you do is not work. So for example, with this YouTube channel, with my mentoring program, which I started about a year and a half ago, the mentoring program I did, it's as much a hobby for me as it is anything else. So that's one rule. Number rule. One of the things I teach about in software development is that it's all about the fundamentals. The basics are what separates the mediocre or the beginning developers versus the real advanced exponents in the game. You have to concentrate on the fundamentals. Now, doing this YouTube stuff, I decided to start doing YouTube because I wanted to do two things. I wanted to develop two skill sets. Number one, I wanted to learn how to be able to speak properly in front of the camera. I thought that was a useful skill to have and just something fun to develop. And I was also interested in video, videography, camera work, uh, stills and video work, but mostly video work. And so that journey started. So what I did one day was to sit down and say, okay, I am going to spend, I'm going to spend a year doing one video a day. So, I'm, so let me translate that. I'm going to do one video a day every day for one year. That was the goal. Whether the video was great or bad or in between, it didn't matter to me. I felt, I figured I would use the same strategy I've used in every other aspect of my life. It's about daily consistent effort and the process of doing will reveal the intellectual understanding of the process of what you are doing. So what does that mean in English? By filming myself every day, I learned to film better and better and better. Not that I'm a Hollywood quality uh, videographer here. No, I'm not. But trust me, if you look at my old videos in terms of the quality of delivery, in terms of the visuals, in terms of the sound, much better today than they were when I got serious about this a few years back. Now, if you look at my YouTube channel, you'll notice that in first videos went up in about 2008, and it was just an experiment. I had one of my assistants throw up, throw up a bunch of our older code courses up there, and then I did maybe you know, a dozen or less commentary videos on MVC and a few other high-level subjects. And you see I'm wearing a big orange shirt, and uh, I'm about 25 pounds heavier. <laughs> so. Uh, much has changed since then, but and I kind of forgot about that channel after we threw up that bunch first batch. And, eh, I forgot about YouTube, and then a few years later, well, many years later, 
I was having uh, a coffee or something with good friends of mine who are social media marketers, and I mentioned, yeah, I have a YouTube channel. And he said, you do? Yeah, yeah. I said, do you mind if we check it out? Yeah, let's take a look. We took a look and he said, hey, you got 10,000 subs. I go, I do. Oh, I didn't know. I didn't know. And I never looked at it. He says, yeah, you got 10, that's something to work with, really? Okay, so anyway, that's, that was the genesis, if you will, of the whole YouTube thing. So again, reiterate, the lesson to take away is do something that you like, something that you enjoy doing. I enjoy doing this stuff. That's why I did vlogs in cars, I do vlogs at coffee shops, walking around uh, in different locations. Um, when I was in Malibu on trips in Florida and all over, you know, I, I just love uh, shooting videos. It's a very fun thing for me. So enjoy what you do. So when you jump into the coding career, whether you're freelancing or getting a job, whether it's this stack or that stack or the other stack, doesn't matter. Try to find something you like. So getting back to the fundamentals, I talk about that all the time. In video, for those who might be interested, the fundamentals of video, what makes video look good in terms of the aesthetics, first and foremost is lighting. First and foremost is lighting. Second is positioning how you frame the shot and so forth. We'll call it framing, not positioning. So you got framing, you got lighting. Those are two key things, not the quality of the camera, not the quality of the lens. And like everybody else, I got caught up in that a little bit. Again, a bit of a hobby thing um, at the same time. And also you get, you get the, the need or the desire to want to buy new toys. You have to admit that. So, and when you have a free flow of cash, you know, next thing you, you start with a hundred, you start with like a, a cheap video camera for a few hundred bucks. And then next thing you got a $2,000 DSLR. Next thing you know, you're doing $10,000 cinema cameras, yada, 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 yada. So what I have found though, once again, just like it is with martial arts, business, coding, videography, sound, the fundamentals are the key. What makes video look good is light, first and foremost. Light and composition, meaning how you frame the shot. That's all that matters. If you have good lighting, you could take your cell phone and make the shot look good. You can make it look more like a movie than a video. So same thing with sound, by the way. I have mics that are $1,500 mics, and I have $20 mics and everything in between. And I can tell you that yeah, there are differences between the mics. Yeah, some mics are really trash, but most, for the most part, you can take a $20 mic and make it sound pretty good in the right room. This is not an ideal room for sound, by the way. Uh, I think the sound is good enough, although you have to have clear sound, by the way, if you're doing good video. Anyway, so there you go. Uh, lessons learned. One of the things I love about learning new things is that it gives you perspective on all the other things that you've learned over the years. I first learned this doing martial arts. You may or may not know I did martial arts pretty consistently for about three decades. Started when I was 10 years old with judo and then kyokushin karate and then taekwondo and then catch kembo and then I did wrestling, I did boxing uh, and a whole bunch of other different styles as well over the years. I was a bouncer in nightclub. I've done competition, a lot of full contact fighting, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And what I've learned from training in all these different styles and all these different schools over three decades is that, again, once again, the fundamentals were the key difference between the great fighters and the not so great fighters. I'll give you an example. I remember when I was about 14 years old, I was training in this style called catch Kempo. It was pretty rough and tumble style. And I was, uh, I was too big to be in the kids' class, but so they put me in the adult class. And there was a lot of uh, rough characters in this uh, particular school. Um, anyhow, so I remember I'd be doing these training drills where I had pretty fast hands. I had fast hands. I was, just, I was a lanky guy. But then I would, so I would be training with these much older guys, guys in their 20s, much more experienced than me. And like when we would do the drills where everything was controlled, I had very fast hands, very fast hands, much faster than them. They would go, wow, you're fast. But when I get to sparring with them, when I, when I would get to sparring with them, I would go to throw a punch or throw a kick or something, and they would hit me, boom, they'd tag me. I was like, wow, the, why are they hitting me? They're so fast. And it, and it was something that confused the, the heck out of me for a while. 
Whereas in training drills, I was clearly had physiologically faster reflexes. But when I would spar with them, they would hit me at will and I couldn't hit them and I couldn't see the punches coming and the kicks coming. They was just like, what the hell's going on here? Well, what it came down to was that they had far superior timing than me and far superior tactics than me. Again, those are fundamentals of fighting. So let's fast forward many, many years when I would, when I trained somebody or as I would train myself more, uh, I would always look to refine and to uh, improve my fundamental, my fundamentals when it came to combat and movement. And the fundamentals of fighting, of course, are timing, tactics, mental, physical conditioning, speed, strength. Those are things. I haven't mentioned technique, by the way, right? Because if you have those fundamentals, you can, just with a jab, you can defeat, you know, people who have 10,000 techniques but don't have as good a solid grasp of the fundamentals as you do. So how do these fundamentals apply to software development and programming. Again, the difference between the noobs and the experts is the experts have a firm grasp of the fundamentals, A. B, they're also technology agnostic, meaning they realize that there's no good or bad languages. There's no good or bad frameworks. There's no good or bad databases. There are only better solutions for a particular situation at hand. This will change. So in my freelancing career, I remember when I was first introduced to this, and it should have hit me earlier because of my martial arts background where I learned fundamentals or everything, because I would find good fighters in any style, in any school. I would go to school A, and they would say, no, you're gonna punch like this, and go to school B, and they say, no, 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 you gotta punch like this, but both produce good fighters, even though they said you had to punch in different ways. And I realized it can't be the punching. It has to be something else that makes good fighters since they contradict each other. Anyway, you get the idea. Same thing with programming. If you look at there in the programming world, you realize that pick any stack, PHP, Java, C Sharp, Python, even Ruby, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You can find successes, huge successes in terms of applications in all these different languages and frameworks. Find great, uh, very successful applications with Google, with uh, Python Django, with PHP Laravel with uh, I don't know, Java and uh, Spring, you know, et cetera. So again, another lesson is don't get caught up in this thinking that somehow um, you're gonna pick the wrong stack or the wrong language. It just doesn't exist. It all depends on the circumstances. So back to the fundamentals. Fundamentals of development is, as I talk about, is just having a real good understanding of code, understanding of what the internet, how it's made up, its infrastructure, a request response not model, the stateless nature of the internet, how data flows from views through the middle layer to the, uh, to the uh, control, through the middle layer, the middle layer is a controller, to the model, and all that kind of stuff, best practices, refactoring. These are all fundamentals. These are principles in ways of thinking about code that transcend the languages. So you see a lot of people out there they want to get that job, right? You want to get that job. And you read in, on the web or you hear YouTube, uh, YouTube and say, oh, the React jobs, that's where it is, the React jobs. Yeah. In certain areas, the React jobs, the React jobs are the bee's knees. The, the, you can get a lot of work in that. But in other areas, it might be C-sharp.net. In other areas, it might be Spring Boot. In other area, areas, it might be Python Django or PHP Laravel, whatever. Depends. The thing is, though, once you become a pro developer, you will be able to pivot from one language to the next with not too much difficulty. And in fact, a lot of people should expect that to happen. So I'll give you one example. So my brother is a developer as well. And right now, his main job and title is iOS developer. He builds uh, iOS apps for iPad and uh, of course, uh, the iPhone. So he started off doing it with Objective-C, then Swift came about, then they started doing much more in Swift. And then all of a sudden, he's building Android apps, same company. Then the company said, you know what, we need somebody to do some PHP work here for our PHP uh, framework. He's doing PHP. So even though he was hired as an iOS developer, he was within the same job. He has pivoted from 
one language, one Swift, uh, four languages, four programming languages in totally different stacks, iOS, Android, and web, PHP. This is common. That's my discussion for today. I think uh, I want to emphasize how across several disciplines, martial arts, videography and YouTubing, programming and development, same thing with design, by the way, uh, to make a page look good. Uh, it's about simple simplicity, simple lines, color matching, proper font use. Again, simple, simple, simple refinement. Uh, if you follow those principles, uh, you go far. Same thing with business, by the way. Business is very simple. I talk, when I talk to people about business, when I mentor people in terms of starting businesses and building a business, at the end of the day, business is not bankrupt unless it runs out of money. So you have to protect the money, once in, first of all. Second of all, you want to figure out as quickly as possible whether your product or service is going to have any legs, so you want to burn it out quickly as possible. Your minimum viable product, MVP as they call it in the VC world, you want to get those products out the door as cheaply as possible. Don't worry about a super clean code. Don't worry about uh, unit testing, especially when you're launching your alpha MVP. You just want to get it out the door. But again, business, going back to business again, it's simplicity. Simple execution, sp speed to market, keep your cost under control. And that's pretty much a consistent uh, set of principles that will help you in any type of business that you get into. Anyhow, my phone's buzzing. I hope you found this video useful. And uh, if, if you subscribe, thanks for being a subscriber. I have to tell you, it's, uh, it's kind of cool to, at my age, oh, one last point, at my age, 169 years old, and I'm in the young person's game of YouTube and doing not so bad. So what am I getting at? I get a lot of people asking me, am I too old to learn how to program at 25? 25, you're a baby. 35, you're still a baby. At 45, you're still pretty young. At 55, still relatively young. Like, are you too old at 60? Why, why would you be too old? It's not like you're going in to become a professional fighter here where you have to be in tip top shape. Uh, although, another thing, by the way, uh, another little tip, you better be in shape. If you wanna be uh, a coder and have a productive life, generally speaking, Get yourself into shape, lose the weight, get it to BMI, body mass index. Get it good, 25 or lower. You, you wanna drink lots of water, eat healthy, uh, stretch, exercise daily. You don't have to be a workout maniac, but trust me, if you get yourself into shape, you get yourself under BMI, your cognitive capabilities will increase, your uh, energy levels will increase, your value out there in terms of if you're dating or you want to get married, whatever it is, it will increase. Everything will just get better if you get in shape. Fundamentals. You got to have a healthy body to have a healthy mind. That's clear. So anyway, so when I hear from these people who say, hey, am I too old? No, you're not. Look, I'm in a young person's game in YouTube and I've been able to do pretty good, uh, you know, without really trying to be a YouTuber. I'm not really trying to be a YouTuber here. But nonetheless, anyway, I hope that, that helps, and once again, thanks for uh, being a subscriber, and uh, more to come. I'm not going to make any promises, but um, at this point, I really enjoy this YouTube and the social media thing, so what I've, I've been promising, um, uh, podcast, and more YouTube, more structured content here and there, um, I think, uh, I think uh, you guys will come to enjoy it. We'll talk soon. Bye-bye.